Two years ago, Sky redid their TV package with a new service called SkyQ, a modern day replacement for the nearly decade old Sky Plus HD system. At first, I didn't think much of it. All it was to me was just an expansion of existing technologies. But now that I have it, has my mind changed? impressions of the SkyQ box. Minimalistic, but in the right way. The one terabyte SkyQ box I have has a box shaped, minimal look with two big buttons for YPS connectivity and power. A select button, as was found in old Sky boxes, would have been nice to control the box without a remote control. However, this isn't much of a deal breaker. It's pretty safe to say that gone is the old fashioned thick box design the box immediately shows off the fact it's a SkyQ box, with the status icon for playback being the shape of a Q, with a red recording indicator in the centre. On the back, you can find all the necessary inputs, such as satellite and HDMI. However, there is a lack of anything other than HDMI in return for the thin box, meaning anything too old will need an adapter or will need replacing. But fair enough, as most people probably use HDMI now. Probably the most important thing to the use of a TV set-top box is the UI it has, and Sky does a mediocre job here. Gone is the age-old pop-up box for channel, now replaced with a translucent full-width pop-up. Gone is the old way of browsing TV. Actually, that's the same. But you can't use numbers anymore to navigate through the sections in TV Guide. And there is no obvious way shown on screen to go forwards or backwards 24 hours. Although the rewind and fast forward buttons can be used to do this. Recordings have also seen a change. The default is now series link, where a whole series is recorded automatically. Though the implementation is not the best, with no way to easily see in the TV guide if episodes are on record. There is a helpful feature that shows you the recording schedule. Everything else is as you would expect, but all the boring lists of catch-up TV, box sets and recordings have been replaced with a thumbnail view, and little blue dots show you when new recordings are available. Moreover, recordings are helpfully sorted into sub-menus for each season. The Sky Q box also have several new connectivity features. There's a section for apps, though there's only a small number of apps, namely YouTube and Vivo. Then again, what apps can you include? Oh, maybe Amazon, Netflix, Spotify, and every other TV service that you can think of. Competitors have had this for years. Despite this, there are still some useful features, such as Bluetooth connectivity for streaming music. With the SkyQ 2TB box, a new touch remote is now available. Now, all that's needed is a simple swipe to take you anywhere, much simpler than pressing a few too many buttons to complete certain tasks. If you ever lose your touch remote, something that I'm sure will happen more often than not, then all you have to do is hold down the Q button on your SkyQ box, and it will start beeping, alerting you to its location, the remote that is. Whether or not you're sitting on it, or it's underneath the sofa. Very helpful. Moreover, you can now view TV shows and movies in Ultra HD 4K. Yes, that is a thing now. And you can record up to six shows at once on the SkyQ 2TB box, or three shows at once on the 1TB box. Also, SkyQ can now make recommendations for new shows based on those that you have watched in the past. Very useful if you had already watched all the box sets that your friends have told you about. Next, an innovative new voice search feature has been added. All you have to do is hold down the microphone button on the side and speak into the microphone that is embedded into the moat, whatever TV show or movie you want to watch next, and it will return to you a list of relevant results. Sky's developers are regularly updating the SkyQ box so we can expect more new features in the near or distant future. When it first launched, a big part of SkyQ was fluid viewing, 
where recordings could be watched around the house and continued on a device such as a SkyQ mini box or a mobile device. The performance here is a tad underwhelming, with the mobile app frequently failing to connect to the SkyQ box, although the app is still an excellent way to schedule recordings or watch TV when the SkyQ box is already in use. The SkyQ mini box is okay, yet it sometimes fails to connect, either because the main box is not responding or the extender is in the wrong position, namely a small gap behind the bed. So, should you buy a SkyQ subscription? Well, you have no choice but to do so, quite frankly. With Sky Plus HD now retired, and Sky being the only paid TV satellite provider in the UK, you have 100% no choice but to go to cable TV alternatives such as Virgin Media if you do not want the new experience. However, SkyQ should be okay for most of us, and seeing as though this service has only been around for two years, which is not that long, as these boxes generally have decade-long lifetimes, the issues should slowly start to be ironed out. But just bear in mind, contracts are 18 months, and the box is no longer yours. You rent it, so be prepared to give the box back and lose your TV if you ever cancel your SkyQ subscription. Thank you for watching.